weapon will prosper. No enemy triumph. He will not overcome. He can scale these walls. Injustice will not win. Hell's gates will not prevail. Not on my time. Not on my mind. Yes, I am a watchman. And I take my place as I wait. I will keep the faith. I am a watchman. And I stand my ground. But if I never see it, I will stay the course. Cause I am a watchman. And I take my set our gaze on you. Yes. God, may every moment of every day, God, be fixed upon your face. May we never forget that there are sons and daughters who follow behind. May we never forget our purpose, God. May we never be distracted, God, just from that tunnel vision. Lord, just again tonight, God, we just renew our desire to keep our eyes fixed on your face. We just say again, God, we want to be a people who seek after you with everything in us. We want to be that generation with clean hands and a pure heart. We want to be the people that climb that mountain, God, and that see you face to face. God, purify our hearts, Lord. Teach us your ways, God. Teach us your ways, Jesus. Open our eyes, Lord, to who you are, God.
worship tonight. We grab a hold of His ears to hear and eyes to see. A new revelation be released over my future and over my present. Spirit of wisdom and understanding over my body, over my mind. Spirit of counsel, spirit of mind over my soul.
definition of love because I have sent my son to come and define just what love is. He says, I will teach you the ways of love. He says, come let me teach you the ways of my love. He says, let me come and teach you just really felt grace come into the room to love the Lord with all our heart, our soul, and our mind. And I just want to release you from the works that, that religion tries to create about how to love God. And, and Lindy was singing about it, about how he's going to help us in this endeavor of love. And in 1 John 4, you know, it says the one who does not love does not know God, for God is love. So you can't love without God because he is love. So follow the, the message here, what God's trying to say. By this, the love of God was manifested, it says, in us, that God has sent his only begotten son into the world so that we might live through him. So he... When we get saved and we come to the Lord, He comes in us, in a sense, the God of love. And then when we walk in love, we walk through Him. And it's not of our own works, lest we boast. And it says, and this is the love, not that we loved God, but that He loved us. And He sent His Son to be a propitiation for our sins. All sin requires punishment for the wages of sin is death and Jesus took the punishment of your sin and there is no greater love than that and so when we receive that love that forgiveness of sin we then have him in us and so then when we function in love we function through him so I just want you to, what part of that has to do with you other than faith? Nothing. There's no work of love. In other words, a, a dead work of love. It is just believing in faith that he loved you, that he removed your sins as far as the east is from the west. Then the love, the God who is love comes in us. And when we walk in love, we do it through him. He's within us here. And I just love it. Because he said that it's not that we loved him, but that he loved us. That's the beauty of his love. That, you know, we have degrees of forgiveness we give people based on our opinion of what they deserve 
but his love is unending it's unbounding it's just it never ends and so as they're singing this song I want you to just do more than just sing words when it says you shall love him well I can't love him without him without having faith that he loved me and so I'm not going to love anybody else properly either and so tonight just in this moment of faith just receive love not of anything you've done because we don't deserve love in that sense but because of his blood he's within us and begin to decree in yourself I'm going to manifest love not because of my works but because of his love in me and I'm going to be able to love the unlovely I'm going to be able to love those who wounded me and hurt me I'm not telling you how it's going to manifest. I'm just going to tell you you're going to have the grace to do it. That's the grace I feel in the room here tonight. To have a supernatural grace to love that goes beyond. And you'll just like, when you do it, you'll like, wow, I know that wasn't me. Because my natural person would have never loved that way. And you'll demonstrate the love of the Father. Because you just believed. And just remember this, he, the punishment was on him to forgive you your sins, but also the punishment was on him to forgive others their sins. And the ones who are hurting you and attacking you and making it hard for you to love them, his blood covered them as well if they'll receive it. So if I demonstrate the love, maybe they'll receive that same love I have, but I can't do it without him. You can't love without him. You can like people. You can demonstrate kindness. You can do all that in your soul, but you can't love. You cannot love. That's why when somebody's in sin, they say they love somebody in sin. That's impossible because that is not love. That is not love. Breathe on us, Lord, right now. <laughs> Spirit of God, come and breathe on us. Touch us like you did the disciples. When you breathe on them, they receive the Holy Spirit. We want another in feeling of that love tonight. So as they sing this song again, don't let it just be mere words anymore. When it says you shall love, don't look at that as a work. Make it a declaration, I will love God because he loved me. And I will love him because he's in me. And I have the ability to love because God's in me. And how many times have you said, I can't love that person? In the natural, that's a true statement. But in the spirit, with the spirit, it's possible. So God, give us grace in this room tonight to receive this revelation, to receive the revelation of love. So as they worship again, let's, let's go at it from a, a different revelation now of what the Lord's teaching us through his word. This is how I know I love you. This is how I know I love you. This is how I know.
unquenchable love is supernatural Beautiful, yeah. Jesus, you're beautiful. Yeah. Jesus, you're beautiful. Yeah. Jesus, you're beautiful. Yeah. 
And as they were singing that, I saw a white whirlwind just like went around everybody in this audience. Whirlwinds scare me because, you know, I just think of tornadoes. But this was the whirlwind of the Lord. And the Lord said it will be parallel to some of you and those that are watching because you've been in a whirlwind. So much so that the circumstances of your life have become confusing like you were in a whirlwind and became dizzy and lost your balance. And so the Lord said, the very thing that has been pulling you down, I'm sending my whirlwind to lift you up. And the Lord took me to where Elijah was carried away into the heavens, into heaven through a whirlwind. And the Lord said, that's the whirlwind I'm sending right now to bring you above your situation and begin to see it from the heavenly realm. Even when Job, when he was going through his crisis, it said the Lord answered him out of the whirlwind. And I'm just telling you, he's hit it twice in the, in the 38th chapter and the 40th chapter. It says the Lord answered him out of the whirlwind. Now, I, I, I guarantee you there's some people in here. If you're not, you will be in the whirlwind right now. So I'm telling you, the Lord has come here with an answer tonight. Not just to encourage you in the sense that, hey, he's here, but he's come to you to speak to you out of the whirlwind. Did you get that? In the midst of it, and he's going to bring you out of the whirlwind. You know, he told Job in the last part there, he, he, he tells him, I'll make sure I do this right. Because Job was getting the wrong counsel in the 38th first verse, it says, Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? tells him to gird up your loins like a man. In other words, he's saying, man up. <laughs> I'm God, and I'm going to pull you out of this situation. And I'm going to make your latter years better than your former years. I'm going to make what seems like a destructive season become a season of fruitfulness. That's where he is tonight. I don't know what's going on in this room fully. But I know what I'm seeing. And it's here. And it's not like a certain, it's really like it's an oblong. It's the best way I can put it, like the room. So that tells me that God will adapt to whatever boundaries there are in your life and will create this whirlwind to begin to turn a situation, and begin to move it and begin to speak to you out of the situation. So the situation doesn't have to be negative. The situation can be redemptive. I just saw, when I saw that, I, when I said that, I just saw depression being sucked out of your brain. So I break a spirit of depression. Just that wants to make you downtrodden and just discouraged. If you're in a crisis... This word's for you. If you're in a situation where it just looks like nothing is working out, this word's for you. You can no longer come into agreement with dark counsel. That's what this whirlwind is for. This whirlwind is to suck the life out of dark counsel, words without knowledge. You know, words without knowledge is opinion. <laughs> without revelation from the Lord. 
he was telling Job this because he was trying to get Job out of having men to try to tell him what God is doing and why he's going through what he's going through. Job was a righteous man. He was not on trial. You're not on trial tonight. You're not on trial tonight. We have been made righteous through Christ. Our sins have been judged. I understand we keep confessing, we keep repenting. I'm not excusing us from that. But I'm telling you, God wants to change the way you think tonight. So we're in a reprogramming moment where God is reprogramming our minds, renewing our minds tonight. And so, Lord, I just enter into this whirlwind. You know, Elijah had to yield to the whirlwind so he could go up. And if you want to go up, you got to yield to what the Lord's doing here right now. Unless you just love the, the place you're in. And you love being down low in the, in, in the place of discouragement. Then I don't think there's anybody that wants to be there. God may have allowed this, but it always had a redemptive purpose. And so, God, I just release the whirlwind of God in this room right now to begin to take us above the situation so that we may see it from a perspective we've never seen it before, so that the will of heaven would be done on earth. Speak to us, Lord, now, right now. Now, there's about to be a prophetic mantle fall in this room. Because I saw, like, scrolls and words above the whirlwind. So as these guys worship, I want you all to really stir that up. That the word of the Lord would be in this room like never before. Just real clarity, not vague words, but direct words. Not dark sayings but direct words, light words, not riddles, but plainly that the Lord would speak here this, this evening. So we stir up the spirit of the spirit of prophecy, which is the testimony of Jesus Christ. And we testify of his goodness. Now speak to us, Lord, out of the whirlwind. Speak to us out of our situation and begin to break cycles right now. Circles speak of cycles, you know. So we just ask God to break cycles with his own whirlwind and create a new cycle, a new cycle of his glory.
talk about you like you're not in the room. I want to look right at you. I want to sing right to you. I don't want to talk about you like you're not in the room. I want to look right at you. I want to sing You're not in the room. I want to look right at you. I want to sing right to you. So we're not going to talk about you like you're not in the room. We're going to look right at you. We're going to sing right to you. We're stepping, stepping. We step. Stepping, we step in, we recognize you're here. I'm not gonna just sit any longer. I'll step in, oh, oh Lord. So we step in, step in, we recognize you're here. Let your glory fall, let your glory fall, let your glory. This is the offering. What she's singing right there is what the Lord's offering tonight. We're all at different levels in our relationship with the Lord. And we're moving, though. Tonight is a point, you know, if we were on an alphabet, you know, A being the least, the, you know, on infinity being the greatest, we're moving from one letter to the next letter right now. Maybe multiple letters. It doesn't matter. The Lord knows what you're ready for. The word beloved is a, a Hebrew word. Doubt is how you say it, but it means to boil with love. It also means a friend. Somebody who's a beloved friend, Jesus is. But I like the fact that it's boiling. And it's a progression. We, we've taught it many times here in the Song of Solomon about the progression of a lover. And I want you to begin to just believe tonight that you're going to progress in your relationship with the Lord. Um, we've decided this year to go after everything and to not go leave anything out. So we're making a commitment. The Lord gave me those words. He said, you need to be all in this year. You should be every year, but this is a commitment that we're making. We're going all in 
And as it says in 1 Timothy 4, that we're going to take pains. We're going to be absorbed with what God has said about us. So that it becomes evident to everybody that we're all in. It's time to not leave anything out. You know, an all in means, you know, you're just going for broke. You just, I'm all in. I'm giving every dime. I'm giving everything I got. And I just have this, this knowing that even if you were to fail, don't worry. You're failing with an all in mentality, which means that if you hit rock bottom, like David, I went to Sheol and there you were. And he says the darkness is his noonday to him. And so even in the darkness, you're going to see light. But I'm telling you, you cannot lose by going all in. It's, you know, I'm not, I'm not doing stupid stuff just because you, you know, you get soulish. But I'm talking about you just, your heart just wants to be all in. And our bride in the Song of Solomon, when she started growing in love with her, for her lover, for her beloved, and when she started bowling with the friend that she was falling in love with, she makes a statement in the second chapter. She says, my beloved is mine and I am his. You know, she's just basically saying, I, I'm, I'm his. And I, I, I mean, he's mine and I'm his. I'm just, you know, we're together. And that's a great statement. That's an immature statement, but it's a great statement. And at the end of her life, when she really comes into mature love and she's really boiling with love, She says this, she says, I am my beloved's, and his desire is for me. Now, oh, wow. See, that's mature love. That you're so in love, you feel his desire for you. Right now, most of us are praying that he would desire us. And our hope is that he would desire us. And we're trying to get cleaned up enough that he would desire us. But mature love, bowling love, knows that he desires us. So much so in this story that we've read before, but he, he, he's so moved by her. He just says, man, you make my heart beat fast. We need to be in a relationship like that with the Lord that we make his heart beat fast. That his eyes are overwhelmed by our form and the form that we're walking in. And I'm going to keep building on this all year if you, if you hang out with us. But I, in the prophetic of hearing God, I just I want you to go for everything. And this is what a beloved love looks like because Moses tapped into it and many others did too John did and Paul did and there are other greats that Abraham did they, they tapped into this they just like when they talked to God it was like just like yeah I talked to him he showed up and I talked to him it wasn't like it was flippant it was just it was so friendship based in, in the 12th chapter of Numbers he said hear my words now hear my words he says if there is a prophet among you I, the Lord, shall make myself known to him in a vision. And I will speak to him with a dream, in a dream. And I love that. You know, we love to hear dreams and visions and to see. It's 818. That's good. Today's the 18th. This is a word. But he said, not so with my servant Moses, for he is faithful in all my household. In other words, he's my friend. He's my beloved. He's the one my, I'm boiling with. You know what? You can boil for God, but God can boil for you. Matter of fact, he's always boiling for you. He's not the problem. We don't have to move God. We don't have to do things to get his attention. He's trying to get our attention. Y'all get that? Y'all need to get that baseline. Quit trying to make God pay attention to you. Here I am, jumping up loud. I'm like, here I am. God fully knows. His question to you taught us Sunday was, where are you? 
you know, that question, where, where are you when he told Adam and Eve? His, his point was that the, the language there in the Hebrew is, where are you? Why are you not here? Where are you? Why aren't you here with me? And Moses was one of those that went to that place of the garden, in a sense, and he was with God. When he was on the mountain, he was with God. And here's what it says. It says, not so with my servant Moses. He said, with him I speak mouth to mouth, even openly and not in dark sayings. And he beholds the form of the Lord. And then God defends him because people were speaking against him. How, how dare you speak against the one I love? How dare you speak against Moses? This is my beloved. This is the one I boil for. This is the one who's tapped into relationship. He's become my servant, my lover in that sense. And he beholds the form of the Lord. He understands my form and what I'm doing, what I'm trying to understand. And I, and I, I want to just say this to you tonight because the the anointing here to prophesy is so strong but if Moses was like that how about us don't we have a better salvation than that Don't, don't we Somebody say, yes, we do, (laughs) we do, and I want y'all to tap into that tonight because we're going to release a spirit to move you into this place with the Lord this way, okay? Oh, Lord, help us, help me, help me understand this, Lord. trying to find that passage where it says Moses with a veiled face. It's in the New Testament. Somebody pull that up. Because I really want us to, to tap into that. Thank you, Father. And I want to be that one that he speaks mouth to mouth to. Where that is, Todd. Where is it? Does anybody have that in the passage? No, no, in the New Testament. It talks about how if he had it through the veil, they had they couldn't look at him. And then I'll get it in a bit. No, I don't want Old Testament, I want New Testament. Huh? Second Corinthians. I want New Testament. For all the people that don't believe in the old. Second Corinthians what? There we go. That's the one I wanted. It's on the right side of my page, up at the top. There it is. I knew, I knew where it was. You ever do that in your Bible? That's what it says. It says, therefore, having such a hope, we use great boldness in our speech and are not like, this verse 13, are not like Moses who used to put a veil over his face so the sons of Israel would not look intently at the end of what was fading away. But their minds were hardened, for until that day, at the reading of the Old Covenant, the same veil remains unlifted because it is removed in Christ. But to this day, whenever Moses is read, the veil lies over their heart. It says, but whenever a person turns to the Lord, say, that's me, say, that's me, the veil is taken away. Now, you're going to have to sing about this. Now the Lord is the Spirit. And when the, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is, I'm not telling you to do that song, but y'all need to sing about liberty and freedom. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed in the same image from glory to glory, just as from the Lord just from the Lord, the Spirit. And that's what the Lord was showing me tonight. We're going from one glory to the next glory tonight in His love and 
and also just getting out of this situation we're in and getting above it, breaking unbelief, breaking doubt, breaking depression, breaking discouragement, breaking hopelessness. It's in his. The room is filled with the presence of the Lord to deal with that. Well, I don't feel it. It's not about your feelings. You can get there, but it's about trusting his word. Trust the prophets. I'm trying, I'm telling you what we're seeing. Okay, y'all getting this? So as good as Moses had it is, you know, and there were those people, the Old Testament, and in the sense that the Jews today, they're still looking through veiled ways because they did not receive the Spirit of the Lord. But now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord, there is liberty. Do we agree the Spirit of the Lord is here? Yes. Do we believe He's in our life? Yes. So by law of the Word of God, we have liberty, and we have freedom. <laughs> by the Word. You, even if you don't believe it, you faith it up until you get revelation. You understand that? Just faith it up until you get revelation. Sometimes there's raw faith you just got to have, and then there's times you get revelation. It's a lot easier when you get revelation. <laughs> I promise you. I can believe for somebody's healing when I see it rather than just praying for it without seeing it. You get it? But we all, or if God was from the South, but y'all, with unveiled face, <laughs> beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed. You are being transformed tonight by this whirlwind into the same image of Christ from glory to glory, just as from the Lord, the Spirit. See, the Spirit of the Lord is what will do it for you, what you cannot do for yourself. El Shaddai is here tonight. Okay? So let's receive that. And you guys got to find something for freedom for this, about the Spirit of the Lord. And I just want to worship the Lord on that point right there. The Lord told me today, you know, the Lord gave us the number 18 this year. And he said, watch 18 all year long. It'll be a sign to you. And tonight, you know, it is the 18th. But when I was reading that about Moses, it was 818. I knew the Lord was saying that. You know, I always think about Deuteronomy 818. He's the one that gives you the ability to produce. To produce. It's him. I know that's talking about wealth, but that's not just money. That's wealth and everything you put your hand to. And so tonight, the Spirit of the Lord is here to move you from one glory to the next. As good as it is in the Lord right now, there's a better place to be. You cannot accept this is the best. I've been in revival. I thought it was the best. I was wrong. There's more. I've been with the Lord. I've had experiences with God. Every next experience with the Lord is always greater. Whew. He's bold in his love here tonight. Put the pieces together. Bold your love for him. And we just release the spirit of the Lord here tonight to have its way, to bring freedom to the captives. Bring freedom to those that are bound, Lord, not only here but those that are watching, those that are listening, those that are in our cities and our families and our friends that, Lord, are just bound. We say the Spirit of the Lord is here tonight to even leave this place and go and touch the things we're believing for. Because, Lord, we want to be your friend like Moses, and we want you to speak to us mouth to mouth. And Lord, we want you to become an enemy to our enemies. You begin to go before us and fight for us so that we're not in these stupid warfares that, that you can take care of. That we're not battling in the flesh, but we're just walking in the Spirit and walking in liberty, Lord. We just declare that over every life here tonight. Everybody believing for that. Okay, let's just worship for a little bit.
where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Oh, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Cause every chain, and every chain is broken in you, Jesus. Oh, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. The spirit of the Lord is there is freedom. Yeah. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Every chain, every chain is broke for you, Jesus. Oh, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. We go from glory. of the Lord there is freedom oh, oh, oh. and every chain is broken for you Jesus oh, oh, oh. the spirit of the Lord oh there is freedom oh, oh. where the spirit of the Lord is there is freedom oh, where the spirit of the Lord is Every chain is broken in you, Jesus. Oh, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So we go from glory to glory to glory. We'll never be the same. We'll never be the same. And you take us higher. Higher and higher, oh, cause we're forever changed, oh, we're forever changed, oh, and we go from glory to glory to glory, we'll never be the same, oh, we'll never be the same, cause you take us higher and higher. Cause we're forever changed oh, We're forever changed Cause this is how I fight my battles And this is how I fight my battle Cause this is how I fight my battle Cause this is how glory to glory The spirit of freedom oh, my battle by you it may look like I'm surrounded but I'm surrounded by you it may look like I'm surrounded but I'm surrounded by you that, that's that whirlwind it may look like I'm surrounded but I'm surrounded by you and this is how I fight my battle
the spirit of the Lord, there is freedom. Release your joy, release your laughter. come to break the chains. Well, we've come to shatter everything that's held us back. We say we're all in. Oh, we say we're all in. You shall in my love you shall love me you shall love every commandment is a promise love me you shall love oh we say we're all in lord we respond oh we say we're all in oh nothing holding us back in long you've come to break the chains of sin and death says you're gonna love me oh we say we're all in he says are you ready now we're gonna release the prophetic here you guys come on I saw this when they just did that, when she went off on that, that song. The whirlwind turned from white to gold. And it, it's weird. It looked like a, a beehive. I don't know how to explain it. And the honey started coming out of it. And the top of it was a rose. And the Lord said, you know, I, we, have that, we used to sing that old song, His name is like honey on my lips. In the Song of Solomon, when it talks about the rose, it's the bridegroom calling his lover. You are the rose of Sharon. We always sing it like he's the rose, but the actual is being spoken by the bridegroom. Okay? And the Lord said that this whirlwind is creating a love and a, 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 an upward movement that the Lord is going to elevate his bride. That's what the rose speaks of. And it's going to be this honey that starts dripping. And it's going to be sweet, which is the word of the Lord. Because he says, you know, you take the word in your mouth. It's sweet to your lips. It's bitter in your belly because you got to pay a price for it. But nonetheless, it's sweet right now. There's sweet words here tonight. These girls, these ladies got some words. And I'm telling you, there are sweet words in the room tonight. It will cost you, yes but it will get you into your mandates. It will get you into your future. It will get you where you need to be. be. So begin to embrace the prophetic word over your life tonight. So you guys, come on. And we just want to release the prophetic here tonight, these words that are here tonight. When I walked in, I, I did see, um, I kept seeing mirrors. And then when Pastor Tim started to share, um, I kept hearing him say, um, be a face looker, not a Facebooker. <laughs> and um, I'm not against Facebook or anything, but it's like when people, I don't know, I just felt like there were people here that, you know, you can connect with getting on Facebook and you know what that's like. You get on and you look at people's faces, but it was like the Lord was saying, look at me, be a face looker instead of just being focused on being a Facebooker and looking at other things. And, and then as you do, you know, I was seeing the mirrors, behold His glory. And that's what you're going to see when you look. And I felt this after, or it was actually this morning I was walking and I felt like there were people here tonight that um, were really struggling with hearing the Lord. And not only were you struggling with hearing the Lord, but you're just like, you're real discouraged and like you're... Um, like you're beating yourself up about it. Like you're just in a place of condemnation, going in and out. Like, well, why can't I hear? 
why can't I hear God speak like this? And, and whether you have before or you haven't like you wanted to, it was like the Lord showed me this so clearly um, because I saw where people were just having a hard time just talking to him and then listening and then you talking to him and him listening. And he said, you know what, it's as simple as this and tell the people this. He said, you know how you get on your phone like this and you just call, hey, you call a friend or you call your family and you go, hey, what you doing? And you wait. Yeah? So what you doing tonight? Really? And you just talk. And so while I'm on a walk and this is coming to me, I did it. I was just like, hey, God, what's going on up there? And I just had fun just talking to him. And then it was funny because somebody beeped in and I was like, hey, God, can you hang on just a second? My sister's calling me. And so anyway, um, and then I come back. And then I finish, and Jimmy's about to leave, and I have to go inside, and it's like, look, Jimmy's got to go. Can we finish this later, you know? But it was just like he was saying, that's how real he is. He's a living God. He's living. And I felt like people were here tonight that needed to be encouraged. Don't, don't be so condemned, and don't believe the lies. Just remember, he's, just an invi- he's, he's a God of invitation that just says, come to me. Call to me. It, this is a phone call that always gets answered. He will always answer. And so um, he's so real. The other thing I got was um, I kept seeing uh, the number 832, and I don't know what that means. But then I saw it. I don't know if it was like a house number, but I saw a mailbox right next to it. And it was like the Lord was saying, you know, when you go to a mailbox and you expect something, you, know, you go, you look for something. And so whatever this number 832 is, I don't know if that means anything to you. He wants you to be encouraged to be expecting something is coming your way, and it is good. And the last thing was I saw someone, and it was like they had pain in their left arm, and like the pain was from here to here. And, um, and then I saw a black watch appear on their hand. And it was like I saw where there had been pain right here, the Lord was turning it over and this watch appeared and he was like, watch and see what I'm going to do for you. So it was a word of expectancy as well to hope and to not be discouraged. And I just pray healing too, just divine healing right now for anyone who is hurting in their left arm. Just the number when she said that, John 8, 32, just when she said that, I heard John 8, 32, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. So I just really feel like that's part of it as well. Um, earlier when um, Pastor Tim mentioned that the prophetic was coming in the room, um, a cedar chest appeared in front of me. And um, so when you open a cedar chest, a lot of times it has the tray thing on the top of it that you keep little trinkets in and stuff. And um, those things you can always open and look at and see, and the small things, but if you take the tray off, you've got the valuable things in there. And they're not meant to be in there. This is what the Lord was saying to me. They're not meant to be in there, to stay in there. They're valuable. They're in your inheritance. And it was like quilt and china. And it was stuff that, uh, valuable coverings. It's, it's valuable things that you're going to serve and not to keep it in there. And I was like, what do you call that? What is that called? And he said, it's a hope chest. And so I just declare right now, you know, it says hope deferred makes a heart sick that hope will not be deferred anymore. Okay, y'all ready? We're going to that next place. I think that, that what, what Karen said especially is, is just a confirmation that you can't measure where you're going by where you are and what you're going through and what you've been battling because God's got a better place for you. And we're, we're taking authority over unbelief tonight. And we're going to not believe the lies. We're going to believe the truth of God. And we want to just receive everything that he has for us tonight. He's taken us higher than him. 
just like Amanda was singing about, we're going higher and higher. I asked them to sing this old song. Hopefully they can remember it. Remember it? Yeah. We're good. Let's sing this. He's going to do that for you. When he's washing you. the door. 
You know, when we, when Karen had that word at 832, and I believe it is John 832, that you will know the truth and truth will make you free. You know, the Jews were standing there and they were just saying, look, man, we're Abraham's descendants. You know, we're, we're it. <laughs> How can you tell us we're going to be free? And Jesus says to him, you know, if anyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. But he says, the slave does not remain in the house forever. The son does remain forever. He said, so if the son makes you free, then you are free indeed. And so the Lord is just releasing into you tonight's sonship. You're no longer a slave to sin. You're no longer a slave to sin. But you're free in Christ tonight. See, religion makes you a slave. But when you walk by the Spirit, this way we're singing about tonight, we're talking about tonight, you're free indeed. Whom the Son sets free and makes free is free indeed. Now, I just decree freedom here tonight. Freedom in Jesus' name, Father, I just declare that. You got any more? You got any more words? Anybody else see anything else? I don't want to be the only one. I just felt we were supposed to pray for Japan. I did see that um, some weather could be coming their way, but to what degree, I haven't, I don't know, but said some weather could be coming that way. And I don't know, I just, I have been feeling Japan all day. So, so Father, we just uh, pray for Japan. We know that Jacob is here from this house, Lord, and we just, we thank you for him, that he is there in the land, and we thank you for the believers that are there, and Lord, just even as this just came on the radar, this nation came on the radar, Lord, as something's coming their way, Lord, we just want to cover the nation right now, and we want to step in now, and we want to lift up this nation and every person in this nation to you, and we ask you, God, Lord, to visit this nation. We pray for an awakening in this nation. We pray for protection for them, Lord, if they're in the midst of storms, even as Pastor Tim talked about, whether it be physical or spiritual storms. We pray, Father, for revival, God. We pray for a turning of the hearts. We pray for healing. We pray for signs and wonders. We pray for uh, dreams and visitations, angelic visitations, Lord, right now with people in the night hour you know, a walking down the streets, riding their bikes, Lord. We just thank you for what your heart is for that nation. And we agree tonight for this nation of Japan. And we do ask you to bless Jacob, Lord, whatever he's doing, Lord, where he is in this season of his life, Lord. We just pray for favor, favor, favor. And I just saw a lock, like, fall off of a door. Unlocking stuff. I don't know if you were in here earlier, but I saw that whirlwind just through, you know, the struggles that people are going through is a sign that the Lord's going to send his whirlwind, just like a storm has a circular motion. God's about to do that. And I also want to pray. Todd and I were talking earlier tonight about Iraq, and uh, we have friends in northern Iraq who are uh, in the midst of the crosshairs. It looks like it's going to be another war of a new group of people. And they're, they're missionaries there. There's quite a few Americans that are there, and they can't get their families out. They've closed the airports. And so in the midst of that whirlwind, we're going to ask for the whirlwind of God to come, that he would speak out of that whirlwind of what's happening there with, between the Kurds and the, the Iraqis, the Shia Muslims, and all the battle that's going on there. And the Lord told me, I, I prophesied it. The Lord said, watch all around Israel because the things that are happening, the Lord is eyeing the expansion to bring Israel into its words that are in Genesis 15, which are its boundaries. And so it may look like chaos is everywhere, but the Lord is just stretching boundaries. So I want to say that to you because as Israel goes, so goes the, the rest of us. And I want you to understand that it looks like there's warfare all around you chaos everywhere but the Lord is stretching your boundaries that's your prophetic word <laughs> so if you have enough chaos around you that's a good sign God's about to stretch your tents and give you a greater authority okay the warfare is just part of it 
It's just part of it. That's that sweet word that's bitter in your belly. Okay, I'm going to get there, but you didn't tell me I was going to have to go through hell, Lord. But the Lord said, yes, you will, but just keep walking until you walk out of it. Don't stop there. Okay, if you're walking through hell, just keep walking until you get out. <laughs> so, Lord, I just pray for us tonight. We pray for Iraq and our friends Fabian and David and all the others that are there. Lord, the Americans that we know are there and as well as other missionaries that are in the crosshairs. And we say they will, they will be sheltered under Psalms 91. And though there be a tempest and a whirlwind, it will not harm them. They will have joy in the midst of chaos. That's a, that's a word I'm hearing. That when it looks like chaos is breaking out, they're going to experience the joy of the Lord. In other words, the salvation of their lives and the salvation of what they'll see with their own eyes will bring them joy while utter chaos is breaking out. And we declare that right now over our friends there and the ministries that are going on there right now. And we say, God, you're expanding your prophetic purpose of that region. And, Lord, what may look like war in one way is a war in the spirit. And we say, Lord, you have authority over the prince of Persia. You have authority over that prince. And, Lord, we ask you to dispatch heaven's warfare upon that spirit in order to gain back territory that's lost. And I decree that over everybody here tonight as well. It's weird. What I'm seeing, the Spirit from Israel, we're seeing for you as well. So just take it. Take it personally, but take it corporately and take it for them as well. Lord, I just declare that tonight. They're going to be safe. I just kept feeling they're going to be safe. Thank you, Father. Now change the hearts of the leaders presidents, the leaders of the armies, Lord, just break them. Father, for your hand, Lord, that the enemy will just, just give into your hand that which belongs to you. The wealth of the wicked will be laid up for the righteous. We declare that. We pray that right now. Okay. All right. Now let me speak to you, unless you have anything else. Or anything. Let me speak to you as you go home tonight. Stand up. Thank you. This became a watch service. We didn't know it did. <laughs> we'll have two this month. <clears throat> you know, we got Chuck coming in November, Chuck Pierce, and I know he's coming for a time such as this. We're going to do the, the conference and to bring things here, to bring governmental shift in the nation. I just got back from Washington today and the battle that's raging in Washington. Just the lack of unity. The, just God is rightly dividing. I understand that. But the lack. We talk to politicians who say, we don't care what the president wants. We're not going to do anything he wants. And, and, you know, we've got to get them to get a passion for our nation. And I think that's where the, the, the church needs to be. We've got to forget about our differences, and we've got to say, look, the kingdom is what matters. And we can't just worry about our differences, and we've got to say, Lord, bring us together for the purpose of saving our nation. And we just decree that right now. But the church will demonstrate to our government what it's like to stand together and lay aside our differences for the good of the nation. We just decree that right now. Now, Father, for everybody that's come tonight, everybody's watching, everybody that's connected, we have moved from one glory to glory. Lord, we know we've moved the needle in the spirit because of your spirit walking through us. You're in us, and we're going to demonstrate it with, with you, Lord, in us. And we, Lord, we thank you that the needle is moving toward the kingdom. Because you said your kingdom is always increasing. There is no negativity. I, get, I want you all to get this. In the math equation, in God, there is no division nor subtraction. Only addition and multiplication. <laughs> 
God does not operate in division and does not operate in subtraction. He doesn't bring a divisive spirit. Now, he allows factions in order to reveal who the truth is in. Paul said that there must be factions among us in order that the revealing of the truth would be there. God is not a divisive person who's vindictive that way. And we want to understand that, that he is adding and multiplying to you tonight. And you leave this place with exponential addition and exponential multiplication. And now receive it right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, receive that word. I'm saying it to myself. I'm moving into addition and multiplication. I'm moving. I want the multiplication, but I'll take some addition first if I have to. One glory plus one glory plus one glory. Then it moves to multiplied glory to multiplied glory. Until one day we're going to say his desire is for us. We're going to mature as a bride and say that. Lord, I just decree that over this house tonight. That we're going to come to that revelation of our love for you and your love for us. That we're going to say your desires for us. Not because we're perfect, but because we've, we've embraced your love fully. And now we know it's not us, it's you. Lord, I just pray for that. Now, encounters, I speak mouth-to-mouth encounter anointing. Friendship anointing. Obedient, walking anointing. Like Moses and beyond. You know, just like in Toy Story. Just want to decree this. To infinity and beyond. Okay? Because within him, there's no limit to his anointing. He said he was without measure. Okay? He's without measure. So we say, our anointing is going to infinity and beyond. I declare that over us tonight. And it's no toy, but it is the story. It's the story of what he's done for us right now. In Jesus' name. Just look at your person and say, boy, you sure look a lot better now than when you first got here. Just tell them that, man. Just tell them they're more, they're more beautiful now than when they first got here. All right? Bless you. We'll see you all Sunday. Men, we got a men's meeting tomorrow night, 630. But we'll see you all Sunday. Here.